communications data. Blast off with Nihilus today. Hi everyone, my name is Ram. Welcome to Coding with Nihilus. Uh, in this live stream, we talk about programming languages, uh, different APIs, building with Nihilus, and other things. <laughs> Hey, Ram. Uh, I'm Black, senior advocate here at Nihilus. Black, how you been? I've been doing fine, thank you. Weather is finally getting a little bit better, so it's kind of hotter today. What about That's you? That's awesome. I've been good. I, I've been curious. Have you been spending time with ChatGPT? Uh, a little bit. Not okay. so much, but yeah. So I, I know that. you've had a few live streams. I'm curious to see yeah. uh, if you use it day to day. Uh, <clears throat> not exactly day to day. Gotcha. There's also, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's Hugging Face, which is kind yeah. of like an open source version of ChatGPT. So I've been trying to use that as well, just to kind of like compare to us. And yeah, it's cool. I, I just installed this uh, AI chat, which is something to you that you can you can install and brew. So you can actually use ChatGPT on your terminal. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to try that to see how it goes. Awesome. Uh, well, let's let's jump in. Uh, we're going to talk about round robin scheduling in Python. So I know in one of the past live streams, we talked about the round robin algorithm. So it was a bit more technical talking about what round robin is and how does it apply to processing different tasks for like a processor, a, a computer's processor. In this case, we're going to look at how round robin applies to scheduling. Uh, so a good example here uh, is if you have any um, service like healthcare, healthcare clinic, they're going to have multiple healthcare providers and their ability is going to be, uh, is going to be very crucial for booking different appointments for the different patients. And uh, round robin scheduling is a good use case for that where you can get the availability of all the different healthcare providers and you can show that to your user. So we're going to look at how we can build that out using Nihilus, Python, and as well, we're going to take advantage of uh, all the different algorithms or options that are available with round robin scheduling. So we have a blog post on this. What is round robin scheduling? Go ahead and take a look when you get a chance. Uh, that talks in more in depth about round robin scheduling and what it is. In our case, we actually have round robin scheduling available as part of our scheduler. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about the scheduler in the past. I know we've had a few live streams. We've had a blog post or two on what is the scheduler? What does it look like? How does it work? Yeah. Uh, in this case, I want to explore the different integrations of the scheduler. So the for, for some of you that may not know, the scheduler is uh, essentially allowing you to embed your availability within your application. So you can have both the administrative side where you can share and create multiple calendars, and as well, you can share those calendars with your users so that they can go ahead and book an appointment or see your availability. And uh, in terms of schedule integrations, there are two types of schedule integrations. And I just want to spend some time looking at our docs to get a better idea of what those look like. So let's head over to our docs and take a look before we jump in and take a look at a demo. And just as a quick parenthesis before you move on, I think this is the first time you're doing a live presenting something using Python, right? I actually don't know. You, you, you may be right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 90, at least 99% of the time is Node for you. So yes. I think it's the first time you're actually presenting Python. Yep, that's that's uh, that's really true. That's a good call out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in the scheduler setup on our docs, again, our docs is at developer.nalys.com. Go ahead and check that out when you get a chance. Here we have two different integrations. So we have the instant integration. This is very um, drag and drop where you can just kind of drop in and embed the schedule, scheduler within your application and you get full functionality of the scheduler where you can create multiple calendars and your you can share those calendars out to your users uh, the integration that i want to look at today is a smart integration and what the smart integration allows you to do is to programmatically create calendars for your users so you're allowed to create as many calendars as you want for your user and you can share the edit flow with them. So they can, uh, they can administer their calendar, but they only get as many calendars as you allow them to have. So in our example, when we're talking about a healthcare clinic with a healthcare, multiple healthcare providers, we would want each healthcare provider to essentially have one calendar each. 
that they can connect all of their different calendars, such as their Google calendars with, and we can share, we can show that availability with all the different patients. And, and like it says here, is the smart integration really allows you to find the, avail find, find the availability between multiple users at once. And this is where round robin scheduling will come in. So let's take a look at uh, what integration will look like. And I wanna first show like most of the demo that I'm gonna show actually came from our quick start guides. So I'm gonna quickly show you where you can grab the quick start guides from and what they look like. So we're gonna go to nylas.com and we're going to log in. So I'm logging in to nylas.com. And on the navigation, you should see quick start guides here. I'm just gonna zoom in. I think on my account, it may just be a, a, a feature flag that I need to enable. Uh, but for most users now, they should have the quick start guides included. So I'm just using a test account here and you have your quick start guides. And we talked about the quick start guides, I think last week. So we've gone through a live stream of what the quick start guides are and how they work. And in this case, we're actually gonna look at the schedule events quick start guide. So I've used most of the functionality from schedule events. And as you can see here, it has all the code for the backend and the front end. So in our case, I'm gonna use the backend as Python and I'm gonna use the front end as React. So I've gone ahead already and I've downloaded the application. So we're just gonna run everything locally. But if you wanna take a look at the quick start guide and grab all the code and just see a walk through all the different pieces, you can select the different backends and as well use the front end React and you can go through code snippet by code snippet to see how everything works. Yeah, the quick start guides are pretty powerful, very easy to use. So just pretty much download, configure a couple of things and you get them running. Awesome. So I'm going to go through a demo next. So let's go through a demo and I will highlight the different code changes that I had to make, uh, had to, had to make afterwards. So you can take a look at how minimal changes I had to make to get this functionality to work. But for now, let's just go through a demo so we understand how or, or what has been set up with the scheduler, what is actually happening, and then we can go through the code a bit more. But first I'm going to log in. So I'm going to log in, use my knowledge account. I'm going to connect my Nautilus account. I think this has happened before, so I'm just going to double check why this is happening. Yeah. Give me a second. Sure. Let me take a look. So. Yeah, these things happen when you're live. Like everything is working perfectly, you don't live, and boom. For some reason, it just goes wonky. <laughs> we actually had the same issue just before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so I think I may have it going. So I'm just going to go add it back. There we go. So we're, we're using Nihilus as hosted authentication. So this is already built for you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And what is going to happen next is we're not actually going to see the full scheduler functionality where you can create multiple calendars. What's happening in the back end is I'm actually creating a calendar for the user. So for each user that walks through this flow, they're going to get their individual calendar that they can go ahead and and connect their existing calendars to. So if they have a Google calendar or they have any other calendars they wanna to connect to this calendar, they can go ahead and do that. And they can also go through and configure anything else related to the service that they provide. So if they have specific hours or any information they wanna request, they can do all of that using the administrative portion of scheduler. So basically the admin flow in scheduler allows you, the user to go in and modify the schedule how they like. So, so the idea do, he, yeah, they can do everything, but they cannot create new calendars. It's just yeah. the one that you provide. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so we can programmatically create one-off calendars for them to go ahead and modify, but they can create multiple calendars on their own. Okay, perfect. So what's going to happen is once I go through this flow uh, for multiple users, I will have many different calendars that I can use to grab availability from. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a look at that next, how to get the different availability. Uh, when we start taking a look at the code. So for now, I just wanted to show you how I'm actually showing the edit portion of a calendar and nothing else within this demo. Oh. 
don't forget to like and subscribe. Just click on the little bell to be notified. Subscribe so you can access or but yeah, actually get notified of everything that we do uh, because we do a lot of live streams. So we need your collaboration. The more subscribers we have, the more we can keep going. With less. Yeah, uh, go ahead, like and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. And we're, we're looking forward to having uh, a few more guests on our show very soon. Yeah, hopefully. Awesome. Let's go through and do a code walkthrough. And I just want to point out a few things in the code, like in, in terms of what's going on. Uh, just to give you an idea of what I took from the quick start guide and what I actually had to modify. It wasn't actually much that I had to modify. So let's take a look at the code. Mm -hmm. So what I'm actually doing as a part of the authentication flow, I'm actually just creating a scheduler for each user. Mm -hmm. For now, I've just given it an arbitrary name and I'm just coming up with a unique slug. So this is the actual URL, how I'll access the scheduler. And I'm just passing in some configuration information. So you can take a look at our docs. There's a lot of configuration you can pass in for the user so they don't have to input too much information into the actual edit flow or admin flow of the, of the scheduler. Yes. And one thing that we need to do uh, for the scheduler to actually show the edit flow, we just need to pass, pass back the edit token to the user. So the difference between an instant scheduler is we give them the access token, then they can go ahead and create calendars and they can modify calendars. But in this case, we only need to pass in or pass back the edit token. So passing this into the scheduler will allow them to actually start modifying the calendar that's been created for them. So this is the actual backend portion of the code that I've updated. And I just wanna show you what the front end portion of the code looks like. So we haven't changed too much. All we've done is we've passed in a parameter in the authentication property for the for the Nyla scheduler. Mm -hmm. And the parameter uh, under auth is page edit token. So what this is doing is just grabbing the edit token that we've stored on the front end and is passing it into the scheduler. Mm -hmm. And this will show the edit flow of the scheduler. So the user will only be able to access the edit flow of the scheduler. They won't be able to do anything else. Oh, wow. And, and I guess this is, this is where we kind of come back circle and just kind of start taking, taking a look at what do we actually do next when we have all these calendars? We can actually query for availability across multiple calendars. So I just created a curl request here and we're using the calendars availability endpoint. And in the calendars availability endpoint, we can pass and select information. And this is gonna be, for example, when a user comes in and they're looking for uh, a health service, they want to uh, book, look at availability for the health, different healthcare providers, mm -hmm. they can pass in their different information in a form and we can take that information such as the duration, when they're looking to book an appointment, such as the start and end time. And as well, here we can actually pass in all the different healthcare providers' emails. So we pass it in under emails and we pass it in under the actual open hours. And this will get us the availability for all the different healthcare providers that we want to show to the user. That's cool. And uh, uh, this is where we circle back to the round robin scheduling, which we've mentioned at the very beginning, really the, the title <laughs> of this live stream. Is there two ways we can look at round robin scheduling? Uh, we can look at max availability and max fairness. So for max fairness, what we're doing is we're actually looking for uh, healthcare providers or availability where that healthcare provider has not been booked as often. So we want to start bubbling up the healthcare providers or the service providers that are not booked as often so that we can spread out the actual bookings across all the different providers. So what we're looking to do is take all the availability or all the different calendars and see which ones are not booked as often and start showing those ones first to the user. And alternatively, if we did a max availability, what this would do is this would just show all available slots to the user. So we wanna maximize for the user booking or we want to ensure that they book. We wanna show them all availability regardless of who's been booked first or who's been booked the, the least out of all the different service providers. And if I were to do this curl command, so I don't have the access token, I didn't share the access token here, but I can show you an example of what the response to this would look like. Mm -hmm. So here, 
making a call to the, uh, to the actual calendar availability, you can see that I get multiple different time slots for different, uh, different service providers that I can show to the user. So the idea with this is you would make a call to calendar slash availability, the Nihilus endpoint, and you would get all the different time slots that the user can book. So you see here I have different emails. So this would be the, the different providers that are available for that, um, yeah, right. for that specific time slot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that, that was a walkthrough of round robin scheduling with Python. Um, I know we took a bit of an arc to get there with the quick start guide, yeah. um, but I just wanted to show that it was very limited, uh, very little code that we needed to change from the scheduler uh, to get all that to work. Yeah, that's pretty important. I mean, you grab something that is already built and then you just change a couple of things and then you have something completely different. It's amazing. Yeah. And uh, also, I know, Blog, you mentioned Python, but we have SDKs in Ruby, Node, Python, and Java. Uh, so this functionality you could build using the SDKs, and as well, you could just use our API. So I showed a curl command at the end. So you could just call our APIs directly to do all of this functionality. Yeah, and, and as you can see, uh, when you use a quick start guide, the front end is going to be always the same. They're just going to use different backends like Ruby, Python, Java. So it's kind of like their choice of which backend would you want to use. So yes. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, uh, what's coming up next? So next Wednesday, we're going to take a look at Streamlit, which is kind of a library like Shiny for Python. And we're going to build an email dashboard. So we're going to do what we did with Shiny for Python, but using Streamlit. So we're going to compare both. And it's going to be pretty cool. That's awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm always excited by email analytics. I, I don't know why. I'd rather look at the analytics than the actual email sometimes. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So we have a uh, live stream every Wednesday and Friday at 2 p.m. EST, 11 a.m. TST. So don't forget to watch us live. Yep. Um, feel free to like and subscribe. Follow us on the interwebs at Nihilus. Um, and we love to hear from you. And we love to, to see you at our next live stream. Yep, totally. Always looking for some comments, some feedback. Just let us know how we're doing. We're doing fine. We're doing bad. What would you like to see on the live stream? Just let us know. So. Yep. All feedback is welcome. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Blake. Thanks, Fran. Always nice.